Today on Doodle Bud, we're doing cheap ink fun paper. I picked up some of these cheap inks off of AliExpress. We have the Carcos Violet. Love this color. This blue, I think it's Jin Hao, but I'm not quite sure, but it's a really lovely blue. I'm really enjoying this a lot. And then there's even some cheap uh, sheening inks I found. This is the Purple Amethyst. Anyways, this it's got sort of a cool color to it. So we're going to go through these and also try out some cool papers. I got my regalia here, this brand new, absolutely gorgeous Claire Fontaine book. Haven't even inked it yet or written on it. Virgin paper. We're going to steal that away from it. And I also got this really cool pad of Robert Oster signature paper that was given to me by the Vancouver Pen Shop and some of my favorite Muji as well. So let's get going through this and test out some ink and have some fun. First up is this Carcos Violet. I bought a few of their inks, a blue, a green, and a black, and this violet wasn't happy with any of them except for this one. The bottles, uh, they're, you know, plastic bottles. The labels are crooked. The threads are bad. And then also this whole jobby, when you open it up, it is sealed nicely, but then you got to pry this thing out and you will always get ink on your fingers. So the packaging really is not that great. It's a fairly small neck to get into. You know, those diamine ink bottles, man, those, their neck is too small on those. You can't fit pens in very well that are wide. Same goes for this. So not a lot going for these. I didn't care for any of them except for this color. So I inked up my Pilot 823. I'm going to try it on a few papers and show you what this looks like. So one of the best parts about fountain pens is playing around with different inks and paper and seeing the new cool ink that you can find. And this is one of them. I tried quite a few. There weren't any success. And the paper too, this Flying Spear paper, just look at this book, makes a great gift. And it's uh, got these this beautiful gold and you can pull out the pages, so it's pre-perforated. My writing's terrible. What a shame for like the virgin writing sample on this book, and I totally, totally make it garbage, but that's okay. The ink is performing well in all the papers, and uh, yeah, the regalia is where this really shows up. It's kind of my new favorite paper. It just makes ink jump, smooths things out, takes a bit longer to dry, but this is my new favorite one is the Muji. So there's different calibers of Muji, Again, I still don't know. This one was just under five bucks. So it's a little more expensive compared to their other stuff, but the way it writes is great. I love the feel of the nib on this paper. The flow is good. This is their cheaper one. And so it says planting tree paper. I haven't had the best luck with planting tree paper, but it's only $2 for this stuff. So super cheap. It's a larger size book. So this is great for like a fine tip pen, not overly wet, maybe even a medium. And uh, it works quite well for just your random note taking. And then finally, this is that pad that I got from Vancouver Pen Shop. And it's the Cosmo Air Light. I've been wanting to try out this paper. So big thanks for them to passing out these pads of paper for us to try out. I'll give you some more details on the paper with the other inks as well. So this time we have a better bottle, glass bottle. Plastic top, of course, comes in one of these little things now. I don't know for sure if it's Jin Hao, but it says Jing Hao, official store on AliExpress. So I don't know what the deal is there, but uh, again, I'll put links down in the description for all of these inks. No crazy seal on this cap. Let's bust out my Pelican M805, open up that piston, dunk it in. Here's a little tip. After you fill it, let out a few drops. That will help keep that vacuum inside of there and then appreciate the ink on the nib. I haven't written with this pen for a little bit, put it away and busted it out. I think this blue looks great with this pen. It's just got the right kind of brightness to it. I usually kind of go for more saturated, darker blues, but I've been looking for a new kind of bright blue without it being turquoise. I am really enjoying this ink pretty much in every, I've used it in I think three or four different pens and I've thoroughly enjoyed this blue. So this might be like a new staple. I'd buy a bigger bottle if I could. Next up is this one from Ostrich. Purple Amethyst is the name. Let's crack it open. We got a nicer bottle, similar lid to the Carcos, but a glass bottle, good threads, and just a basic seal is all you need. So let's ink up this Monteverde Ritma with a 1.1 stub. This will show off sheen if we can. Again, put it across all the papers. This was a fairly dark purple, and I kind of enjoy it. My only other purple ink really is Lavender Purple from Mont Blanc. One of the, actually, I think it was the first bottled ink I ever bought. I enjoy it, um, but I just haven't used it a bunch. I kind of want it to be darker, kind of how uh, how this ink is. It just has a little more depth, a little more richness to it. And we'll review all the inks here on the paper in a moment, but you'll see it also has 
a really enjoyable sheen. I don't have any of that purple and gold combo. So uh, this ink is great. Three inks, three pens, six papers that we went through. So let me run through these and I'll actually start off with kind of worst to best. Starting off with the worst is this Muji book, but I got it like for two bucks as I showed you. It's the, the planting tree paper. Now, sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's okay. This one isn't okay when I still have trouble understanding their papers, but for $2, this is a larger format size. You really can't go wrong. But here is the violet. You can see on that wet 823, it does sort of feather a lot. If I could tell you like a flavor or something, like uh, almost like when you see that can of grape crush if you've ever seen it that's sort of that ink color or maybe even like a purple cotton candy overall the ink is okay but the paper is not quite showing it as well here is that jing hao blue the closest blue i would compare this to is horizon blue and here we got that ostrich purple now it has that sheen and on this paper it's just coming up a pretty dark purple. Now, this was actually surprising I was, as I was writing, is the Rhodia is my second least favorite. This is the standard 80 GSM. Um, you know, I've used this a lot, but actually the writing sample compared to these other papers, this didn't feel as, as nice and smooth. So here we go. Here is, again, the Carcos Violet. That nib on my 823, I'm still deciding what to do with it. It is just a little jagged how it writes, but you can see it's not overly smooth there. The color on here, it doesn't really seem to do much. It kind of, it's a little bit flatter on the uh, uh, Rodeo paper. And here we got that Jin Hao or Jing Hao blue. Same thing, Horizon blue, I think, is the closest one I have to it. But there's really no sheen to this, which is kind of nice because sheeny ink can be kind of sticky and gooey. And here, again, is that Ostrich. Ostrich. <laughs> Um, not much sheen. You can see a teeny bit. I don't think we can pick it up on the camera, but almost no sheen on Rodeo. So this is the Claire Fontaine Flying Spirit paper. It feels just beautiful to write on. And you can see it, it's more of a creamier color. There is the Rodeo as a contrast. It didn't do anything crazy. It does sort of fill it in a little bit nicer. Uh, it's got a nice color to it as well. It, it's going to be a darker background, right? That creamier paper as well. We got the Jing Hao blue, same thing, looking nice on there. It is a little bit of fuzzy edges on this paper, so I'm a little surprised from there. Uh, again, the sheen is really not showing up yet on any of these papers. I have been wanting to try this Cosmo Air Light paper. I didn't realize it until now that this is what this was, other than it was the uh, Robert Oster signature pad. So again, I got this. At the second to last night, the Vancouver Pen Shop was open at their original location. We had our Vancouver Pen Club meeting. They opened up late for us and they passed these out to everyone. At the end of the video, I'll include some footage from that night so you can check out. It was a pen club meeting at a pen shop. What a, it was a pretty, pretty fun night. So here we go with that violet. Looks very nice in this. Now, one thing I'm noticing, you can see this sort of, yeah, looks like, this is very sensitive to like kind of grease or if you're you got sticky hands and you got you know stickiness on there going on now uh, my kids found this pad and they were having their dirty hands all over it so this does not surprise me but some papers are more sensitive to it than others but it does feel very nice writing on this and you get some nicer shading on this paper as well and now we are starting to get some of that sheen. You can see that kind of golden sheen is starting to show up on this Cosmo Airlight paper. I've heard really good things about this paper. I can see why, um, you know, you, it's got some show through, but no bleed through whatsoever. So pretty happy with this paper and the way the ink is showing up. This is a very tough call on which is my paper. This Muji paper here, the one I showed, again, I'll, put, I'll try to put my uh, information down there in the description. I really, really like these books. They're, they're simple and plain. The paper feels so smooth. This is probably one of the nicest feeling papers when I go to write on. This feels way better than Rhodia. It, it does have its limits, but it can take quite a lot. Let's have a look at the ink here. This is the Carcos Violet. Again, it seems to smooth things out just a little bit more but but without you know going fuzzy and feathering you still get some beautiful shading and now look at that sheen you can really pick up that sheen on there it's not going to be as much as the regalia we'll see that in a second uh, the camera's not quite picking it up as good as i'm seeing it with my eyes here but we're getting 
some nice sheen. This paper works well as far as uh, show through and bleed through. If you go like a really, really crazy pen, it has its limits. But again, barely any show through, definitely no bleed through. I like how they are. They sit flat. They have spiral bound and also other uh, binding methods. But even the ones that aren't spiral bound, they open and they lay flat. So I'm, I'm a huge Muji paper fan. And uh, yeah, this has not let me down. I like the price, I like the look and everything else as well. Let's check out the regalia. Here we are in the regalia. We're just getting so much more just kind of richness and fullness on the color and shading as well. This one is, it's a much, it takes longer to dry and it is also a little sensitive to the same thing, the hand kind of sticky prints or, or grease prints that you can sometimes get on your paper, but uh, just gorgeous colors. It makes every ink just go to the next level. Look at the shading there on that blue. Now that's really looking absolutely gorgeous. I really like in this ink. I've been looking for a new kind of favorite blue, been paying around, been disappointed. I like this one. I like it quite a lot. It behaves quite well. The full water smudge dry test. I, again, I don't have the patience for that. Look around online. Maybe someone else does and they've done it. Uh, but yeah, here is that sheen going on. If you want to see the maximum an ink can do. I also know I haven't tried it, but Tomo River Paper. Heard it's amazing. I believe you. I haven't had any in my hands yet, but... Uh, yeah, I really like this regalia. It sort of smooths out your jagged edges to make your writing look a little bit nicer and just takes those colors to the next level. So it's got sheen to it. This isn't the sheeniest ink in their lineup. Um, they have some other ones that really go crazy, but I didn't have a purple and gold, so I thought I'd try it out. But again, if you get the right paper, it really sets it off. I put together a collection of no less than 10 blue inks to compare to this Jing Hao Blue, and we'll do it on Rhodia and Regalia. What the fuck? I didn't have any valid inks to use as a comparison with the Carcos and the Ostrich inks that I got, but I do have a bunch of blues, so I pulled out 10. I picked a few that I figured were fairly close, and then a bunch of other very common inks. That way, I, uh, after all the swabbing, I can give you some close-ups and give you a bit of a color comparison so you can see if you like it. So after all that swabbing and swatching, let's see the results here. I would actually say the Namiki blue is the closest to the Jing Hao. The uh, Monteverde Horizon blue is a little more saturated. I did redo the samples because um, I thought I was getting a little more wet as I went on and these might have been dry. So if you really lay it on wet, it is closer a little bit. You know, now we're getting closer to the Horizon blue. But uh, the next one down, maybe it's the Pelican 4001 you know, a little more purple, but same type of thing. And also the majestic blue is sort of in that range, but yeah, it's an absolutely lovely blue. I really like it. Just like a happy blue color. Then if we go over to the regalia paper, you can see the ink colors change quite a bit. They just seem to do more of whatever they're going to do. We got, you know, even a little bit more purple going on now, but yeah, same thing. Namiki blue is pretty close. And if you lay it super thick, now we're closer to horizon blue. So there you go. For all of the uh, kind of random named inks that I have purchased online, these are the only ones that I've, I've really enjoyed so far. Maybe some of the other colors in these ones I will. I've tried other colors. <laughs> they all kind of sucked. This one was good, but yeah, very happy. These are newer ones I've just gotten. I'm pretty happy with these and the price. This was, I don't know, it depends on your exchange and all that. So it, it look it up online. I'll put a link, but this was like five or six bucks and this was like eight bucks somewhere around that range, free shipping. So that's really the kicker there is the free shipping deal. So that's it for today. A very non engineering kind of fun video, just playing with inks, because I do that as well. Not everything I'm super science based with. I just like to play with my pens and play with some inks and play with some paper. Again, there is sheen on here. It's just not quite showing up on the camera. Just a hint, oh, we got it on the A there on the ABC in the corner. You can start to see that sheen. It is there, see, there we go. But yeah, Regalia is awesome, but my kind of recent favorites, I love these Muji books. If you got a store nearby, check it out. If you don't, <laughs> sorry. Anyways, got more stuff coming up. Catch you next time. If you managed to stay the whole way through the video, here's a little bonus footage from a little trip to the old location of the Vancouver Pen Shop. This shop has been there since the 80s, and this was their second to last night. It's the uh, third Thursday of November. We happen to hold the Vancouver Pen Club meetings on the thir Thursday of every month, and they said, let's do it. So this was the first time we've ever actually had a meeting there, and it was a blast. It's just a bunch of people who all love pens, especially fine pens, 
getting together in the Vancouver Pen Shop, which has been an absolute staple in the city. Their display at their front window is absolutely fantastic. It is something to check out all the time. I hope they're able to continue that in their new location. But we have new members, old members, folks that have over a thousand pens in the club. And we all just get to get around, tell stories. And, you know, whether it's a vintage person or people who are, love modern pens or modifying their pens, tweaking nibs, love journaling, paper, all brands. It's just a really fun way to get together. This is the closest I've ever come to an official pen meeting as far as the pen shows go. I do wish to attend one at some point. We'll see what 2023 holds. But I uh, hope everyone's starting the new year off great. We've got lots of videos, endless ideas. And I got some really fun stuff that I think will surprise everybody. But I'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching once again.